This is the West Michigan Sports Show, presented by Daysos Digital. Now, here's your host, Brandon Worth. What's going on, everybody? Welcome into another edition of your high school sports coverage in the West Michigan area, a la the West Michigan Sports Show. Brandon Worth joining you here this Saturday. Hope you guys are enjoying a great weekend. No matter where you're listening in from, whether you're live with us on 96.5, 107.7, or 14.60, as well as on WBRN.com and the WBRN mobile app. If you ever miss this show, don't worry about it. Go on WBRN.com, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You can get caught up on any missed episodes for now until the end of eternity. But we got a great episode for you here today. I had the opportunity to sit down with a very spectacular athlete from our local area as she competed recently in the Olympic trials. Those know the name of Erica Beisel. She has been a phenomenal thrower in the Big Rapids area. She was a former Cardinal product from Big Rapids High School and then went on to Grand Valley State University where she is still competing and she is still doing damage. She's a state champion, a national champion at the Division II level, and now an Olympic trials finalist. I got a chance to sit down with her on the experience at Hayward Field competing for Team USA as well as all of her great accolades and her journey as where she will continue to go in the sport of throwing for now until she decides to call it quits because she's a phenomenal athlete and she's going to continue her great success no matter where she goes. I can guarantee that. So we'll get into that as well. In the second half of the show, I have a little interesting idea here. I recently came across the ESPN's top 100 athletes of the 20th century list, and I decided to take a little deep dive to see what exactly was behind this list and why are people put in some places? And I'll give you my thoughts on them because I can tell you my list is probably not going to be the same as what they put out. So we'll break down that in the second half of the show. But before we get into it, big thanks to our sponsors, those that make this show possible. You guys are great. You guys are fantastic. The local sports support is eminent in this area. Those include obviously Dezos Digital as the primary sponsor, any sort of digital media, drone footage, any sort of website design, anything when it comes to programming and streaming, they got you covered. Visit DezosDigital.com as well as all the other great sponsors we have, including the Makata. Sasua Career Center, Motor the Macasta Sasua Transit Authority, Paris Auto Sales and Service of Big Rapids, Alter Care of Big Rapids, Quality Car and Truck Repair, the Schubert Insurance Agency, and Johnson's Automotive. Thank you guys for your support of this show. But without further ado, we'll get you into the interview room, and especially for those that might not know Erica Beisel. She's a phenomenal athlete, and more importantly, she is a great great comeback story and not necessarily like she had a setback but it's a small town local glow up kind of a story and I had the pleasure of writing it and I've actually seen Erica compete as she competed for Grand Valley State I competed for Ferris State so many times in conference meets we would see each other not necessarily interact as much because she was obviously doing her throwing thing I was doing my running thing Uh, but when you look on the results on the bus ride home and you see all of your teammates and you can see all the names that you see near the top of the list every time that you're there and she's one of those individuals. Grew up in Rodney, a really small town for those that know this West Michigan area. And, and it's really incredible to see the success that she has had and especially the attitude that she puts towards the sport. And I think it's very inspirational for those to hear. So I will blabber no longer. We'll send you to the interview room with a collegiate national champion, a high school state champion, and now an Olympic trials finalist in the sport of track and field, particularly discus throw. Here's Erica Beisel on her journey to Hayward Field and competing for a Team USA roster spot for Paris Olympics 2024. Now we are joined by three-time national champion, two-time state champion, and Olympic trials finalist. Has a pretty good ring to it, doesn't it? (laughs) It sure does. Erica Beisel joining us here from Grand Valley State Track and Field. First of all, coming back here from Eugene, Oregon, Hayward Field, the mecca of track and field in the United States at the highest level, how was that whole experience like first and foremost? Uh, it's been amazing. You know, I have a lot of people that have been welcoming me back and just congratulating me. And it's, it's a new feeling, but I'm getting used to it. And, you know, I just I love being back home and being back with everybody who wants to support me. So, yeah. And you had a great performance finishing fourth overall in the discus throw. Just talk about that experience and especially for you performing not only at your first trials, but being one of the youngest competitors in the entire field and finishing one place away from going to Paris. Yeah, it was really intimidating coming in, you know, standing next to all these amazing women and top athletes in, in their field. And 
Uh, getting there to practice at Hayward, I think I had an advantage in the weeks prior. This is my third time competing there. Um, but yeah, it was really intimidating. I think me and my coach sat down and we had a conversation and we were like, hey, you know, we're not going to try and make it to top 12, but we're sure as hell going to, you know, do our best. And so that's what we did. We, we just did our best and we ended up PRing and broke a school record in the process and then made it to finals and broke another school record in the process and took fourth and it was, it was amazing. I don't know how to describe the feeling. It was so overwhelming. For sure. And I think there was a quote that I remember reading back in 2021 after you had initially committed to college and you said that shot put was your favorite. Now, (laughs) you've competed in the Olympic trials in discus. Is there a flip now where discus might be the Uh, top favorite? I think now being at Grand Valley for as long as I have been, I've grown to like discus a lot more. Obviously, I'm a little bit better at it now, Um, but I've had just as as much success with shot put. So I think I'm pretty 50-50, but long-term, I think discus is going to be my thing. So Yeah, we introed in with all of your accomplishments so far, state champion, national champion at the college level, as well as school record holder at various levels, athlete yes. of the year at various levels. What's the next goal for Erica Bison when it comes to track and field? Uh, the next goal is to break the discus national record uh, for Division Two, as well as the shot put national record, and uh, it's within reach. I did it at Eugene, but it doesn't count because it was out of season so we'll try and execute that this season and then uh, long term yeah we're going to try and make it to the 2028 olympics and see how that goes so yeah for where you are at your top level what are the things that you're going to look to improve on in order to try to get to those marks uh we're definitely going to take a step back and get back to i think i said this a couple times in a couple interviews but getting back to basics and really you know, training, not just trying to throw hard every practice, but really trying to think about each movement and how that works and really processing each step. And so I think that's for the next four years, that's going to be what it takes to get to that next level and to make it and compete for the USA team. So yeah, just getting back to basics. Yeah. Rewinding back to growing up in Rodney, learning about sports, what made you choose track and field? That's kind of your sport of choice. Uh, you know, we, my family, we weren't, uh, my parents never pushed us to do sports. We weren't, you know, pushed in soccer and basketball and everything is if you want to do it, you can do it. And, uh, in high school track was one of those things that me and my sister were doing it together and it was just something to do. And I actually wanted to quit. Um, but I had some pretty great high school coaches that kept, you know, Hey, you could do this and you could go to college for it and you could get a scholarship for it. And I was like, Oh, wow okay and uh, kept doing it and broke high school records in the process and loved it and ended up at Grand Valley and loved my coach there and loved the team and everything so yeah it's been a, it's been a long journey but I love it so yeah when especially in that process what's been the inspiration to not only compete in track and field but now you're advancing yourself at the college ranks and now even the professional ranks at the trials what's your inspiration to keep on going I think I've always been really competitive and I always want to be my best and I always want to be better than the person next to me. So looking at uh, Valerie Allman and people like that, you know, I, I want to be at their level and I think that's what keeps me going. And I have a lot of people who keep pushing me and supporting me and that's what keeps me going. So, Absolutely. And when you kind of look back now, growing up in Rodney, a place of only, you know, a couple thousand people <laughs> to now being on the top level nationally. Yeah. of track and field. I mean, just reflect on that. What does that feel like now kind of reminiscing back um, to where you started? It's kind of crazy. You know, I'm just a small town girl. Like I didn't grow up in a big city and coming back, it's it's a little different coming back from Oregon and Eugene and, you know, all season we get to travel to these different places and compete against different people. And, you know, this is where I'm from. This is where I grew up. And I love, I love Big Rapids and I love Rodney and everything about it. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely an experience to come from, you know, a hundred people to thousands of people, but it's pretty awesome. Absolutely. The final question that I have, I'm sure there's a lot of dreamers out there probably watching this video, seeing who you are and where you've been. (laughs) They want to get to that level. They want to be a college champion. They want to be at the trials. What would be your biggest piece of advice to them in order to achieve those dreams? I mean, it takes a lot of hard work. It takes a lot of dedication. There's a lot of choices in life that uh, help you get to this point and not doing the things that are going to get you in trouble and not going to parties and, you know, getting in bed at a reasonable hour and, you know, going to practice on time and stuff like that. Um, those are things that I do and that's what has gotten me to this point. You know, I'm in, I'm in practice and half hour before everything starts getting warmed up, doing my thing, 
and that help, puts me in a better spot than a lot of other people. And I think just willing to put in the work and effort to, to be your best is that's all you can do and believe in yourself and have a little confidence and it goes a long way. So yeah, that's what I got. Absolutely. Erica Beisel, Olympic trials finalist joining us here. Thank you so much, Erica. Thank you, Brandon. Big thanks to Erica for stopping by and doing the interview with us. There is a video version you can watch on News Radio WBR in Big Rapids on YouTube. You can log on and watch the full interview with myself and Erica as well if you didn't get enough of the audio version this first time. Uh, but big thanks to her for stopping by and especially as a Bulldog. Many people don't want me to say this, but uh, especially for her highlighting the local area, her story from a small town, very similar to me. Uh, I really will be rooting for her uh, to finish out her Laker career, and it's going to be really fun to see, and I think she's got a lot of potential ahead of her, and it's going to be fun to follow. We're going to take a quick break. We'll pay some bills when we come back the second half of the show. I'm breaking down ESPN's top 100 athletes, more than the top 10, and why some of the list might be a little skewed. Don't go anywhere. The West Michigan Sports Show is brought to you by Dezos Digital. Dezos Digital specializes in a number of crucial business elements in today's advanced world of technology. Dezos Digital specializes in web design, digital content creation, including graphic design for logos, advertising, and digital videos. Dezos Digital also works with programmatic digital display advertising and YouTube digital video advertising. They also work with premium and performance audio streaming, both via the Big Rapids Media Radio Station stream as well as Spotify, Pandora, Apple Music, and more. Find out more information at DezosDigital.com. Welcome back here to the West Michigan Sports Show presented by Dezos Digital. ESPN just released a list of the top 100 athletes in the 21st century, and this list has caused a lot of comments over the last two days since it was released on July 18th. So we're going to kind of get into it a little bit. This is a very interesting conversation on why people are ranked above others. Does the sport necessarily impact the ranking? And a lot of these conversations. So I'm going to do my best and dive into it. And I think David Schoenfield, the one that wrote this, an ESPN senior writer, wanted these conversations to take place about what we perceive as great athletes and accomplishments. And I think he did a fantastic job of putting this list together because there are so many that you can move around. And, and I think it will really do a good thing long-term um, to make these conversations going. Because he could put a perfect list together and we'd be like, wow, he's really good at his job and he did great. Good job. And that's it. But he's causing us to have conversation by purposefully moving these around. You can't tell me he isn't. Uh, and it's a great list overall. So we're going to go through the top 100. I'm not going to name all 100 names. I'm not going to bore you guys to death. But I'm going to highlight some notable ones here in the top 100. But then we'll dive into the top 10, especially uh, here later on. So some notable ones here. Connor McDavid, number 98. He is a young hockey star. Three-time Hart Trophy winner. Five-time Art Ross Trophy winner. Uh, he's going to be a guy that we're going to be talking about in the top 50 by the end of his career. And if not, even the top 25, top 20. Uh, he's going to be a fantastic player. He really is a standout, uh, and he's continued to tear up the ice from now till the end of time. Rory McIlroy, the golfer, is at 93, and I think we can all agree if Rory has the ability to close tournaments, he would be a top 60 athlete of all time. He would be a top five golfer of all time, but he just really struggles with putting wins together. He has 26 tour wins, but he doesn't have as many major wins, and especially in recent memory. I mean, he is right now competing this weekend uh, at the Open, and, and he struggled. He missed the cut. I mean, those are kind of the courses that you expect him to be good at, um, but he's just kind of had a little bit of an off year. He's had a lot of things going off the course as well, um, so he'll figure it out eventually, um, but he could be that guy if he just had some more wins to his belt in recent memory. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is 91, uh, obviously with his Super Bowl trophy and his MVPs, you can see that. Kawhi Leonard is 85. I think this might be a little bit slept on. He should be a lot higher on this list. He's a two-time finals MVP. He's a two-time champion. He's an all-star. I mean, this guy is fantastic. He really is. And I think he's just going to be slept on because of some of those injuries, because some of those setbacks. And, and that's an unfortunate thing for how well that he's done in his career. Uh, next nurse notable name on the list, 73 is Mookie Betts, baseballer for the Dodgers. He is definitely got some potential to be in the top 50. And I think he's going to be a really good player. He's already a seven-time All-Star in his young career. He was the 2018 MVP. Uh, but he's consistently been a good player. It's never been the conversation of, oh, he had an up-down year or he had a one year or that was really up and one year he's really down he's been consistent he's been extremely consistent he deserves to be on this list one spot ahead of him is sean white a snowboarder many people are like eh, snowboarding like is that really over baseball and football sean white is a three-time gold medalist 
He's a 15-time X Games medalist. He knows how to snowboard at an elite level. He's the one of the greatest snowboarders, if not the greatest snowboarder of all time in terms of competition. And so we need to put him in that conversation. Regardless of what you think about snowboarding, he needs to be in that conversation. I think that is fantastic. Um, and I think this one thing is interesting here. We'll break down. Um, there's actually a breakdown of the top 100 by the sport. We'll get into that here in a little bit later, but we'll keep on in the list. Some notables, Phil Mickelson, a golfer's at 68, uh, with a, certainly the track record that he's had and especially um, the interaction with fans in sports. Uh, you can see why he's on that list for sure. Ray Lewis, a legendary linebacker, is at 61. He's a Hall of Famer, 12-time Pro Bowler, 8-time First Team All-Pro. Ray Lewis tore up a football field like no other. I think he deserves to be in the top 60. Uh, I think where he's at um, in terms of success when it comes to championships, he doesn't have as many championships as some guys that we'll talk about later, uh, you know, within, in terms of Super Bowls and things like that. Uh, but I think definitely you can consider uh, the fact that he's the only player with 40 sacks and 30 interceptions since 1982. That just shows you that people did not want to put ball near him, but it didn't care. He was still great. Here's one that I will create some controversy. Number 57 is Calvin Johnson. Calvin Johnson, in terms of attributes, build, athleticism, is a top 20 athlete of all time. He's a top 20 athlete, if not even top 15. And people know what I'm talking about. It's just that he played for Detroit. That's the only reason he's down on this list. He doesn't have as many uh, championships. He's a three-time first-team All-Pro. He's a six-time Pro Bowler. If he would have played... A 15-year career, won a Super Bowl or two, won a couple NFC championships or AFC championships, no matter what team he would have been outside of Motown, we'd be talking about him in the top 25 of all time. And, and that's unfortunate to see for his such a short career and, and such a really low, lost season driven career in Detroit, losing a lot of games. That It's unfortunate that he has to get put down that low uh, when it comes down to it. Uh, this one's interesting. 51 is Steve Nash. Steve Nash, the Canadian Steve Nash. He's 51. I think he needs to be a little lower on this list personally. And it's not because that he is an all he's a Hall of Famer. He was on the 75th anniversary team. Um, he's a five time assist leader in the all NBA category categories don't get me wrong Steve Nash was fantastic Steve Nash was also on some legendary teams that helped him get there and I think that kind of really he wasn't necessarily the standout athlete he was a great facilitator one of the greatest facilitators we'll ever see in the game of basketball easily but when you look at him compared to some of these other athletes we're talking about athletes as far as athleticism accolades like Calvin Johnson I don't think there's an argument that we should flip those two but that's just my opinion nor here nor there. Jimmy Johnson at 47 for auto racing. Interesting, right? What does racing have to do with athleticism? More than you think. The amount of energy that's going through the top half of your body, especially your head while you're racing, it's a whole mental game. And it really is more physical than you think it is for being able to handle a car at 200 miles per hour in these curves. It takes a lot more out of you. Um, but I think some people are going to be talking about Jimmy Johnson. Why is he on this list? You know, why necessarily is he on this list? Michaela Schiffer in the skiers at 44. Three-time Olympic medalist, two-time gold medalist. Uh, she has a record in World Cup wins on the skiing circuit. I think she should be a little bit higher on this list. You can call me biased, um, but she's been fantastic, and I think she's going to have an incredible career upcoming, assuming she can avoid the injuries. Our good friend wearing the old English G that just retired recently, Miguel Cabrera, is 33, two-time MVP. He needs to be higher on this list. I'll say that with bias. There you go. I'm just going to say it with bias. He was better than all these records say, and people know what I'm talking about. Randy Moss at 27. That one is interesting. I think he could be a little bit higher on this list. He just doesn't have as many of the accolades to back it up, um, and that's truly that's truly the only reason he's lower. Here's one that I think is going to bring a lot, a lot of controversy, and this is going to be my first quoted miss by this list. Floyd Mayweather is 25. Floyd Mayweather is an undefeated boxer. From 96 to 2017, he was 50 and 0, 50 and 0. He never lost to another man in the ring for a span of, yes, you did read that right, 21 years. He had never lost. World champion five times, long time number one for years and years. 
he needs to be higher in this list because boxing is one of the hardest sports in the game. And I think certainly we have to discuss him being higher on this list. Patrick Mahomes is number 18 on this list, a football player, three time Super Bowl champion. Patrick Mahomes will be top 10 by the time his career is through. I think we can all agree on that with the potential that he has. Uh, and I think it certainly is worthy of looking at. Katie Ledecky is number 15, 10 time Olympic medalist. By the time she's through and through, she'll make an argument for the top 10 as well, um, especially after Paris. She's going to collect a lot of. A lot, a lot of medals at Paris. I'm going to call that right now. Steph Curry's at 14 as well uh, on this list, and you can see why. And I think really the only thing that is missing for him is a longevity of a career that he will eventually get to uh, year in and year out. Uh, then we have Cristiano Ronaldo, Rafael Nadal, no- Novak Djokovic. So soccer, tennis, tennis. To lead us into our top 10, which is Kobe Bryant at 10, Usain Bolt in track and field at 9, Tiger Woods at eight, Simone Biles at seven, Roger Federer at six. Tom Brady is number five on this list. LeBron James is number four on this list. I'm sure you're thinking who in the world is passing Tom Brady and LeBron James. Here is what I'll tell you. And these people, I think we can make an argument for these two individuals could be a little higher, But I'm going to tell you why I like this list where it is. Number three on this list is Lionel Messi, a great soccer player from Argentina. He definitely is in this top three, guys. I don't care what you think about soccer. What he has done to the sport and what he has done in a career is what people dream of. People dream of this. He has won 10 La Liga championships, four Champions League championships, which is the best of the best in clubs in the world. You have his World Cup winning season, which was amazing. Eight-time Balloon d'Or winner, which is basically the greatest player in soccer that season. And he has won uh, so many 17-time FIFA World 11s, the top 11 in the world. And many of those times, he's the MVP of those teams. So he's number three. Number two is Serena Williams. 23 major wins. A record 365 major match wins. It's a women's record. And she also won a tournament while pregnant. Yes, while pregnant. Incredible things from Serena Williams, and she has dominated the sport of tennis. You're probably thinking, who in the world is left for number one? Everyone that I would have guessed has just been picked. The answer is Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps is undisputedly, in my mind, the number one athlete in the world uh, for what he has done in swimming. 28 Olympic medals, 23 golds. Unbelievable. He won eight in a single year at Beijing. It's incredible. Now, I'm sure you're probably going to say, yeah, LeBron James can swim better than Michael Phelps. And I'll tell you that you were wrong uh, and we'll make those arguments, but don't compare what he did in that sport is incredible. And what he did for the United States on the biggest stage consistently as the number one since he entered the swimming circuit until he retired, he was the number one undisputed. We have never disputed if he's the top player or top competitor or top athlete in his sport ever. And that is the bottom line. So Michael Phelps is number one. Let's go back to the breakdown by sport. Basketball was the winner with 24 athletes, 17 baseball, 15 soccer, 12 football, six tennis, four golf, four boxing, three track and field, three auto racing, and three for hockey. I think this is a great list. I really do. I think basketball is one of the hardest sports to play and can be consistent at. Um, I think baseball should be right behind it. I know people are going to say football should be the number one. Yes, maybe, but let's be let's be honest here. When it comes to the perception of bath, best athletes in the world, it's hard to compare football because football doesn't have that national presence. Not yet. We will get there when we got all these international games. Um, but right now, I think it's true that basketball does have some of the greatest athletes, and, and I think it just shows to, it goes to show how elite level those are. Baseball is probably the hardest sport, though, and I think that they are deserving of number two. Let me know what you think of this list. Let us know, WBRN.com. Thank you guys for listening. Thanks to Dezos Digital, and we'll see you back here in a week on the West Michigan Sports Show here on News Radio, WBRN.